Hi, I'm Simon Can. Welcome to Synthesizer Bootcamp. This is the second video in the series and I'm going to look at filters. Filters have one main function, to shape the sound. They do this in two ways. First, they cut out certain elements of the sound spectrum and second, they boost certain elements within the sound spectrum. And of course, they can cut and boost at the same time. This boosting and cutting can then be controlled in real time with envelopes, LFOs and a range of other modulation sources. For this video, I'm going to focus on the filters. I'll look at some of the modulation options in other videos. There are three main types of filters. Low pass filters, which cut the higher frequency elements of a sound, allowing the lower frequencies to pass. High pass filters, which cut the lower frequency elements of a sound, allowing the higher frequencies to pass, and band pass filters, which allow only a narrow band of frequencies to pass, cutting the rest of the signal. There are many other types of filter, but these are the main choices and the most useful for musical purposes. Let's look at these three filter choices in a bit more detail. The low pass filter cuts the higher frequency elements of a sound. The filter progressively cuts the sound above the cutoff frequency. As you turn the cutoff frequency down, more of the incoming sound source will be cut, and so the sound will get duller. By contrast, the high pass filter cuts the lower frequency elements of a sound. A high pass filter progressively cuts the sound below the cutoff frequency, so as you turn the cutoff frequency up, more of the incoming sound source will be cut, and so the sound will get thinner. A bandpass filter cuts the higher and lower frequency elements of a sound, only allowing a narrow band of sound around the cutoff frequency to pass. This gives the sound a nasal quality. The filter also has the effect of robbing the sound of a lot of its energy. By selecting the filter type and the cutoff frequency, you can identify the element of the sound that is removed. You can then boost the sound with the resonance control. Resonance works by boosting the sound around the cutoff frequency. This gives greater emphasis to the element that is cut and so makes the effect of the cut more dramatic. Adding resonance can make the sound brighter and can also emphasize any change in the cutoff frequency since it is the sound around the cutoff frequency that is boosted. Here's the filter suite we heard earlier in this video, but with some resonance. The resonance control can really become useful when you start modulating a filter's cutoff frequency with an envelope. You have just heard a note where the filter's cutoff frequency is controlled by an envelope. Now listen to the same note as the resonance control is turned up and then turned down again.
As you can hear, the sound with the resonance is very different. This is because the cutoff frequency that is being controlled by the envelope is now emphasized by the resonance. And of course, resonance can be applied to high pass filters too. When this happens, the lower frequency end of the spectrum gets boosted. The effect can be more subtle than with a low pass filter, but you can also use resonance in a high pass filter to get some real floor shaking bass sounds if you want. The last option that is available for most filters is the filter slope selector. This determines how aggressively the filter cuts the sound above or below the cutoff frequency. A filter slope will often be expressed in terms of the decibel cut per octave. A 12 decibels per octave filter will cut the sound by 12 decibels for each octave by which an element of the sound exceeds the cutoff frequency. So frequencies which are one octave above the cutoff frequency will be cut by 12 decibels. Frequencies that are two octaves above the cutoff frequency will be cut by 24 decibels, and so on. A 24 decibel per octave filter will cut the sound by 24 decibels for each octave by which an element of the sound exceeds the cutoff frequency. And a 36 decibels per octave filter will cut the sound by 36 decibels for each octave by which an element of the sound exceeds the cutoff frequency. There are many other filter slopes, but those three are very common. On the face of it, a 36 decibels per octave filter may seem to have the most effect. However, if you are looking to have a specified amount of frequency cut at a specified frequency, then in reality, the 12 decibels per octave filter would actually cut more of the signal, thereby having a greater effect on the sound. As you can see in the image, the light blue area is the additional amount of the sound spectrum that is cut by using the more gentle filter slope. While the cutoff slopes are interesting, and you can hear the difference between different cutoff slopes quite clearly when you listen to a sound in isolation, within the context of a mix, the subtle nuances may be hard to discern. You'll also find that the overall sound may be more dependent on the character of the specific filter that you're using. That's the end of this video. If you want to know more, then take a look at the other videos in this Synthesizer Bootcamp series. You should also check out some of my books about synthesis, which cover the issues raised in these videos in much greater detail. In particular, I suggest you look at How to Make a Noise and Becoming a Synthesizer Wizard from Presets to Power User. Both are available from all leading bookstores, including the online stores. You can find out more about Synthesizer Bootcamp and my books by visiting my website, noisesculpture.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.